We're going to talk about installing USB drivers for use with an Infinity system. First thing you want to do is have an Infinity hooked up to 12 volts power, wired per our instructions. You want to turn on the power and connect the USB cable. Uh, when you do that, Windows will make a ding sound when a new USB device is plugged in. And then you'll see down here somewhere, you may see that it's a uh, installing device driver software. Um, Windows will not automatically know where to find the drivers, um, so that process is probably not going to complete itself successfully. Uh, what you're going to need to do is first you want to go visit our website amelectronics.com slash downloads. That's going to take you to our downloads website. In that downloads website, you can find Infinity Tuner drivers. You want to download that file, it's 2.9 megabytes. Now, that sound that we heard was Windows doesn't know where to find that driver, probably because I haven't downloaded it yet. We're going to go grab this zip file that contains the USB drivers, uh, put that somewhere. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it to the desktop here. Copy and replace. Now that we have this file, I just put it on the desktop because it's easy to find. Uh, this is going to contain the drivers that we want to install. So now we want to go and find the device manager. So you can open the start start button, type device manager, uh, press enter or or select this button in the control panel. And this is the device manager. In our device manager we can see that we have a AEM Infinity 10 EMS connected but it's being categorized as other devices uh, and there's this little exclamation mark that tells us that the drivers haven't been correctly installed yet so we're going to right click tell it we want to update this driver software. It'll ask us how we want the software. We're going to browse our computer. Uh, if, it, if we ask it to search automatically, it'll take a long time and it may not find the correct folder. We're going to browse. We just now put this in the desktop. So you want to browse to your desktop, assuming that's where you put the folder. And then there should be a folder called AEM drivers signed on your desktop. Uh, make sure this checkbox is on to include subfolders. There's different folders if you have an Intel or an AMD based system. Then you click Next. And now Windows knows the correct place to find the drivers. It's going to install that driver software correctly now. So now Windows has successfully installed the AEM Infinity EMS drivers. Click close and now under device managers this shows up as an AEM controller um, as opposed to an unknown device. So that's good. Um, that means we've installed our USB drivers correctly. Um, the next thing that you're going to need to do on especially on a Windows 7. This particular laptop is a Windows 7 64-bit. That's a pretty common type of Windows install. Go to your program files folder and make sure that you always run an Infinity Tuner as an administrator. So we're going to go to the start menu, go to computer, uh, find your C drive, program files x86, AEM, uh, Infinity Tuner, and in this folder there's going to be one file called infinitytuner.exe. Uh, some of you may not see this .exe extension. Um, you have to have some Windows settings turned on to show the file extensions. It may just be Infinity Tuner, and then it'll show you this, this uh, little Infinity icon. You want to right click that file. You want to go to Properties. You want to go to Compatibility and 
privilege that will run this program as an administrator. Uh, by default, this may be turned off. You want to make sure this is turned on. If it's not turned on, then the program does not always have access directly to communicate with the USB, and you may have uh, communication problems, or the, the software may not connect at all. Um, so you definitely want to run this program as an administrator. So we're going to click OK there. And then when we run Infinity Tuner next time, uh, right now it's showing us USB Infinity 10 is connected. That's because we have a, an ECU connected. Um, if we were to turn off our ECU, turn its power off, it's going to disconnect and tell us that we're no longer connected. So if you follow these procedures correctly, uh, you should be able to connect to an ECU. Uh, the software will automatically connect as long as it's open. Um, let's open up a layout um, in the AEM layouts folder is what you'll have for V92. Uh, we'll go to 92 all tabs. Uh, let's go to 92 fuel, that's a little simpler. And so this this should show you um, live data from the ECU. So we're connected to a a test bench. We can see our battery volts. We can see our air temps and coolant temps. Um, with my test bench, I can move the throttle position here and see that we're getting live data. Um, on a vehicle, it's a little tougher to do this. But on my test bench, I can move the map signal and see that my map is is changing. You may be able to unplug a map sensor to, to confirm that. Um, so this is just a, a good verification that we are, in fact, connected to a real ECU, and and the software is is uh, is talking to the to the ECU. Uh, another good way to check that you're connected and have a, a good USB connection is to uh, to log some data. So you can go to log, start recording, and then when you start recording, this is going to show you one, two, three, four seconds of of live data. Uh, again, I'm not connected to a running vehicle, so I can only change a few things. But I can, I can move the manifold pressure signal on my on my test bench to kind of show that we're getting live data, and it's and it's saving that live data. So uh, I hope that was helpful. I hope that you all get your USB drivers installed correctly. Thanks for watching.